right, everybody, welcome to the bouncing ball portion of this tutorial. So I am going to show you how to follow a sketch and give something the appearance that it's bouncing as it's moving from the top to the bottom of a composition. And we're going to do this with a simple circle today, but you can do this with any asset using just position and um, scale. So let's go ahead and dig into this. So I already have this animated here, but I am gonna go ahead and start it from scratch. So what I want all of you to do is make sure that you've downloaded the tutorial files for this particular tutorial. They should be, let me see here. The tutorial files that you download will include, here they are, a bouncing ball sketch. Okay, and then you're going to have a paper airline, uh, paper airplane PNG file in there that you're going to be using for this tutorial. Okay, so make sure that you've downloaded that folder and you have that in an easy place to access, whether it's a folder that you've created for this class or if you just work off of your desktop from week to week for tutorials, however you want to do it. All right, so I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to delete all of this because we're going to start from scratch. You want to start a new composition that is 600 by 600 pixels as we've been doing a frame rate of 24 and go ahead and make this five seconds, but I'm actually going to show you how to adjust the amount of time on your composition if it doesn't fit into what you assign it from the get go. Okay. And let me just move this back. We'll talk about that later. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start off with a new solid layer. So we're gonna go here. I'm gonna pick another, uh, a gray color is what I had before. So I'm gonna go with kind of a, a darker gray. I'm gonna hit okay. Perfect, now we have our solid background layer. I'm also going to do a new shape layer. So I've got the new shape layer there. You wanna make sure that creates shape is selected over here, not creates mask. I'm going to go over here to my shape tool and just choose the eclipse. As I drag my eclipse, if I hit shift, it's going to leave it in that perfect circle shape, which is what I want for the beginning. I do not like that bright red. I'm going to make something that's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So I'm going to go for kind of a light purplish pink for mine. You can choose whatever color you like. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm going to take my selection tool and kind of move this towards the top. Now, what we need to do is import our sketch, which is going to guide us on how to animate this ball so that it looks like it's bouncing. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to File and Import. You're going to navigate to wherever your bouncing ball sketch is. I'm actually going to cancel this because I've already got mine imported. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to bring the bouncing ball sketch down into your composition layers area and you're going to put it in the middle so that it is underneath the, the, um, the ball that you created. What we're going to do is we're going to increase the scale so that it's fitting over the whole composition. There are quick keys for all of your main um, uh, properties in a layer. So I'm going to start using those and I'm going to show how you how to use them too. They're very useful. So if we want to adjust the scale of this, what I can do is just highlight the layer of the drawing and I'm going to hit the S key and it's going to bring, bring my scale property up. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the scale so that it's fitting over everything but that I also have the ball in here, the full sketch throughout the drawing uh, on the composition. Okay, so one thing about this is I don't want to be trying to animate my ball and have this be selected and moving around a whole bunch, right? That's gonna get pretty irritating. 
So what we're going to do is actually lock this layer. So if we go over to the sketch, there's a little lock down here. There's a couple of different options. There's also, you know, you can turn the visibility of a layer on and off, which we're going to do. But we want to actually lock the bouncing ball sketch layer. And now when we go and try to move it around, we can't. And that's a good thing. And I just moved my background off the composition, so I'm going to Command-Z that. Okay, so now I can select the shape layer. And what I want you to do is we need to move the anchor point to the center of, of the circle. So we're going to go ahead and grab. So you want to... Um, you want to just click onto the layer. You don't want to have anything particularly selected down here because again, these shape layers get, they can get really complicated and we'll get into that a little bit later on. But there's the transform eclipse properties and then there's the transform of the entire layer properties. So we want to make sure that we're moving the anchor point for the transform properties of the entire layer. So the anchor is down here. It appears to be so we're gonna grab the anchor tool and we're gonna take that and click and drag it up so that it's in the center of the circle okay um, so if you were to let's grab our selection tool grab and adjust the circle it should be adjusting from the center of that anchor point okay all right the next thing we're gonna do is make this a little bit smaller so that it's fitting over the first circle at the top here. Okay, perfect. Now we're ready to start animating. So the other thing that you want to do is make sure that your scrubbing tool is at the beginning, the very beginning of your timeline. So here we have it. There we go. If you ever lose your scrubbing tool, by the way, um, it just means it's kind of off into uh, no land over here <laughs> where you can't see it. Usually if you just click down a little bit past the final frame and click down and drag in, your, your scrubbing tool will pop back up. Um, but if you get stuck and have issues with that, just you know, let me know and I will help you. Okay, so... Our shape layer, we want to transform two different things. So with the scrubbing tool at the beginning, we're going to toggle on our time clocks for position and scale, okay? And there's our first keyframe. So we want our bouncing ball to start here. I want you to drag your timeline forward a little bit, and we're going to start animating this movement. So we're going to bring the ball down and it looks like it's just a little bit smaller here. So let's go ahead and push it in. This does not need to be perfect, by the way, in any, in any way. Okay, so now we've got a second set of keyframes here for position and scale. Move your scrubbing tool forward just a little bit. I would even, you know, space these as even as you can as you go through. We're going down to the third one. This is where the properties really start changing. So we're gonna make the ball a little taller. We're gonna push it in a little bit. Let's see how that fits over. That's looking good. Okay, now we're on to position four. We're gonna go down, and here it gets a little bit skinnier. Maybe a little bit taller, okay? Scrub forward. And I'm going to use my spacebar and hand tool so that I can see the part of the composition that I'm working with now. Here we have a dramatic change because the speed of the ball is changing quite a bit. So we're going to just shape that as best we can. Now, if you are animating this and you're like, I really wish I could see underneath this um, shape right here, what you can do is bring the opacity down temporarily and that's going to allow you to see the drawing underneath, which is probably more helpful. So you can um, bring the opacity down. Don't toggle on the time clock because we're not animating opacity. We're just bringing it down a little bit for the purposes of animating this. Okay, so we have these keyframes set. We need to remember to scrub forward a little bit. Otherwise, 
the animation, you know, it'll, whatever keyframe you're sitting on, if I come over here and I make changes, um, you know, I will lose this position here. So you want to make sure you scrub forward. And remember, Command Z is your friend. Undo, undo, undo. It takes a little while to get used to the keyframes and how they work. So it can be challenging. And this also does not need to look perfect, okay? Um, in terms of how the ball is animated. I'm just, you know, in terms of grading, going to make sure that you we're able to have somewhat of a bouncing ball. Okay, I can see here that my keyframes are actually not spaced very well, so I'll take a look at that here in just a moment. All right, I'm gonna bring this down. It looks like it's time to put this back into more of a ball shape at this point. So it's a ball shape, but it's a little bit tall. So that's looking good. Scrub forward. Here we have more of a perfect sphere, sphere once again. So we're gonna make that pretty much a full circle and then we have our really exciting bounce shapes down here. So I'm gonna flatten this out, bring it in a bit. Oh, see, I forgot to scrub my tool forward. Let me see. Oh no, I did, okay. I did bring it forward, so this is right, okay. There we go. And this is really a good introduction to what it's like to animate frame by frame, which is very tedious. This is a, this is a laborious process. Okay, there we go for our last one. All right, now let's back it out and let's look at this. We'll bring the, come over here and bring the opacity back up again so we can really see it. You can see that ball transforming over time and then it gets the bounce. Of course, we're mid bounce, right? I'm gonna show you how to um, fix that here in just a minute. All right, now I need to kind of even these keyframes out a little bit. So you can always marquee select, so click and drag. I'm gonna push that one in a little bit. These do not need to be perfect by any means. Okay, so now the spacing looks pretty good. This one maybe doesn't have. And, and you know, playing around with these and changing the timing of them is gonna make your ball look different in the animation. And that's a good thing, right? Uh, having these evenly spaced doesn't mean, you know, the ball is gonna have a pretty um, predictable and calculated sort of bounce to it. If you want it to be more natural, which bounces are not really predictable in any capacity, right? You can change the spacing of these keyframes to make your bounce act and behave a little bit differently. But for this tutorial, we're just uh, going for even spaced keyframes. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how you can adjust the, um, the timing of this bounce. So if you want it to go a little slower, you can marquee select all of these keyframes. And if you hold your option key down, you can actually stretch them out over time, or you can make it a little faster if you want. So you can play around with the timing in that capacity. So I'm gonna stretch mine to about a second and a half. So here's one second, two second, second and a half. Now we're gonna finish the bounce, and this is really a neat trick, and it's really easy to do. So this, is our middle keyframe. So we don't wanna duplicate this, but I want you to select all of the keyframes that are to the left of that last keyframe where the ball is flattened, and you're gonna hit Command or Control C for copy. I want you to bring the scrubbing tool down to where your next keyframe would drop, and you're gonna hit Command or Control V for paste. Now, this is repeating, right? And we that doesn't make a bounce. But all we need to do is reverse the keyframes that we just dropped. So if you don't have them selected again, you can just marquee select them like this. And what you're gonna do is control click or right click on them. You're gonna go to keyframe assistant 
and you're going to select time reverse keyframes. This is a very handy technique to know. So select that. And what you're going to notice is that it reversed those second set of keyframes so that you have a full bounce. Cool, right? The next thing, and this is going to happen all the time in motion design, is that I've noticed my five second timeline is um, too long for what it was that I was doing. So you can go to composition and composition settings and change it here. That's one way to do it. Another way to shorten your timeline is to come to the end of your timeline and this second blue work area end is what pops up when you hover over it. You can click and drag that in and shorten the work area for your timeline, okay? So now when I hit play, it ends and it repeats at a particular time. And I'm looking at the bounce now and you see it. I mean, it looks like a bounce, but it's, you know, the spacing of the keyframes could be played around with a little bit more to make it a little bit more natural. And you can do that if you want, but you don't have to. Okay, so now we need to shut off visibility of the layer with the drawing. So I'm just going to come over here and toggle the eye off so that we can't see it. Look at that, what a nice bounce. All right, now we are ready to export this. So you're gonna go to Add to Media Encoder. I'm gonna tell it where I want it to go, which is to my desktop. Let's render that out. There we go, we've got a bouncing ball. So you can pretty much apply that scale and position to just about any asset that you put in After Effects and create a bouncing effect in that way. So there you go. There's bouncing. All right. I will see you in the next video. Okay. Bye.